Hello Truth Seekers, uh, I am so sorry it's been such a long time, uh, I, this video is way overdue for the winter solstice, but I guess I just, uh, in, in my prep for winter solstice video, I shared what data I had collected, I think up until a day or two, uh, before the projected date for the winter solstice, and then things kind of got overcast over here, and I was only able to collect, I think, maybe one more day of data, and then and then maybe one data point on the day following, but it wasn't 100% sunlight, and it, it just didn't seem conclusive to prove out kind of what I was lo thought was going to happen, and so I guess I wasn't... Uh, <laughs> The most motivated to put all this together and I knew I had to do it but life just got busy and so I I'm only now just getting to it but I'm gonna share it with you as food for thought and mention a couple other things and uh, uh, so w without further ado the um, you know the the creators times we have four opportunities at least four opportunities per year to confirm the creator's times and at least four of them and uh those are the um the seasonal days that separate the four seasons of the year cycle uh in the uh they're known as the solstice events and the equinox events the days the longest and shortest days of the year and the days of equal light and equal darkness and um when if you've seen any of my previous videos, you, you understand that these I, I've I've seen these three patterns uh, over the course of the year, and this is this is I'm starting to feel pretty pretty confident about. I mean the 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 way these patterns show up. Uh, I'm I'm still I have I really don't have much doubt at all about the solstice events like those are pretty straightforward the sun is gonna the shadow of the sun these are these this picture shows the the marks that you would record off of the shadow of some object that was catching and casting a shadow uh, over the course of. Uh, the year, and, but anyway, the solstice events is pretty straightforward. You'll see the marks hit an extreme location uh, in the north or the south, depending on which event you're looking at. And the equinox event is the trickier one. Uh, the, the theory that I've heard is you'll see a straight line on the day of the equinox, and all I can say is if that is true, that is like. <laughs> an amazing sign, very amazing, the geometry in place for everyone on Earth to be able to see that straight line pattern using a sundial, so I'm still in the process of proving that out. Um, I'd, I'd like to be able to confirm the uh, <coughs> solstice events, and then once I confirm the solstice events, I'd like to just make sure that it would be the day directly between those two solstice events that would that would be the equinox event, and we would see the straight line pattern on that uh, uh, day. The other interesting thing that different people have been talking about lately, and I mentioned in one of my previous videos, is the potential for the sun to be a uh, witness, a secondary witness on the equinox events. Um, people get focused on the phases of the sun a lot, but when Enoch talks about uh, the lunar months, I'm pretty sure if you go back and you read, you will see he is talking about the movement of the sun through the portals and not necessarily the phases. And Enoch gives us a, a hint when he talks about the peculiar pattern of the moon, and he says that the moon, he seems to say the moon lines up with the equinox, in, like with, with the sun, in the same portal that the sun is in on the day of the equinox. Um, so... <laughs> That is, uh, that's really interesting potential for second witness. I, I had to check that out in Stellarium, um, and it, it did appear like that was what was happening on both the spring and the fall equinox events. Uh, I will be making a bunch of short videos kind of, uh, discussing, 
uh, a, a lot of different interesting points for people to consider as we've we have one mon- month to uh, kind of <laughs> discuss this leading up to this next spring equinox. Um, but anyway, uh, a big point I'd like to mention is, you know, according to Genesis, if if you only had Gen, like I'm open-minded, I have been having conversations with. Uh, different uh, truth seekers regarding different calendars lately. I mean, mainly the, the the Zadok Priestly Order Dead Sea Scroll calendar. Uh, the data that was found for that Dead Sea Scroll uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls for the calendar. And I I do have an open mind. Um, but as I've mentioned in the past, I am going to be sharing kind of. I'll let you know my leaning um but but i'm open-minded but i have some some big you know i have i have questions i have uh we we need to prove things out prove all things and so i'm going to be making a series uh that i think i'm going to call be calling testing the zadok priestly order dead sea scroll calendar we're just going to be going through uh, different, uh, we're, we're just going to be testing this topic. We're going to be doing background checks. We're going to find out who it was that wrote this data. Like, what what did they ascribe to? What kind of community were they? Uh, then we're, uh, you know, we'll ask why did they write down this data, uh, this calendar data? Like, were they were they trying to confirm? Like, why did they do it? No one, no one ever did it before them. And you know they just started doing it. So why were they were they trying to um, <laughs> were they t- trying to re- rediscover lost knowledge, or were they trying to you know, establish new knowledge, or you know uh, possibly create their own uh, uh, version or understanding of Enoch? I just wanted to briefly say you know an interesting thing uh, so far. Like I said, I think there's there's a big difference between phases and movements of the luminaries, the moon through the portal, and like that's potentially very big for the equinox event, uh, but it could be big for other things as well, uh, and I'll talk about those in other videos. But I don't think I see that ever mentioned in this priestly order data. Like they're always just um, they're focused on the phases and not the uh, not the position of the moon. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> uh, we'll be coming out with that series. But because uh, the thing is, you know, when I read Genesis uh, and when I read Enoch, it, it just seems like Enoch is putting Genesis into action. You know, Genesis says uh, essentially, "I give you." The, the luminaries, let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. And I recently had someone, I heard someone say, and try to say, that the luminary were only given for signs, but Genesis one uh, fourteen says they were given for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. And so when people start trying to say the the calendar is this independent thing from the witness of the luminaries, that that concerns me a little bit because it it, it seems it surely must be very 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 much connected. Uh, <laughs> certainly, I would never say it's independent, but what it seems to be boiling down to is. Uh, Enoch seems to clearly state that the first day of the year is simply the uh, the day when the sun enters the fourth great portal, but the priestly order calendar data is saying the first day of the year has to be on a specific day of the week. So there's the the, uh, the that's that's in a nutshell that's going to be the difference this spring, I think. Uh, they're both of these groups. I think Enoch groups and Dead Sea calendar groups are both going to be trying to confirm the equinox. But then once the equinox is confirmed, <laughs> the difference I think is going to be some groups are going to, you know, go after what Enoch seems to be saying that the first day of the year is simply the day following the spring equinox. 
but then uh, others will be trying to align with a specific day of the week, and the reason for this is because of what we see in the Dead Sea Scroll calendar data. So, I mean, that's the big difference uh, between Enoch and the Dead Sea Scroll calendar in a nutshell that I can see. But there, there's another, there are really a lot of big differences, I, I think, and they're subtle, but they're, they're, they're big. And that is, I think there is this disconnect be, between what, uh, like, what is time? Like, like uh, in these calculated calendar camps, they really do think the month and the year are these independent uh, number cycles or calculations. But like I just said in Genesis 1.14, I believe, if the translation is correct, he said, "I've given you the, these for time, uh, for uh, for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years." And so, let me just read. You've been looking at this picture of Enoch, but also this is something that jumped out and been convicting me lately. But um, you know, in Enoch 82, verse four says, "Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are those who walk." Uh, in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heavens <laughs> and entering into and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands uh, of the orders of the stars together with the four which are intercalated which divide the four portions of the year the year. I don't think I read anything, any number in Enoch that was not tied to something the luminaries were doing. Like, they weren't just numbers floating around loosely, like it was a 30-day month because that's what the luminaries were doing. Like, we have a witness for that. It was a 364-day year because that's what the luminaries were doing. And notice... <coughs> Notice it says four portions of the year. So I'm going to give you a quick example, like the the Jewish calendar with the 13th lunar month. Like that does not yield four portions of the year, four equal portions. The four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. Like with the lunar month, you end up you, sometimes, in the extreme case, you could end up starting your first month of the year a month into the season of spring. So then your year cycle, like the the quote-unquote year cycle, Y-E-A-R, the year cycle begins for them, you know, when, when their 13th month expires or whatever, and, but that, that year cycle for them now has a portion of spring and then the full season of summer, the full season of fall, uh, the full season of winter, uh, or <laughs> or part of the season. My point is it, it, it's not going to have four equal portions and it's going to end up with like fragments of seasons. And so that's the extreme case and it clearly doesn't seem to be matching what Enoch's talking about here. But it is the same thing, except just on a smaller scale, uh, with with these intercalation groups. Like, I I'm not I'm not understanding. It just seems like there's this love for the Dead Sea Scroll calendar data. And I'm going to talk about. Hopefully, remember to talk about that in a minute. But you know, it just doesn't, it seems to almost be defying the, the simple reasoning, like, you know, if, if we blew all this calendar data away, and the sun it was doing its thing in the heavens, like, it would be quite obvious to anyone that the year is four seasons, that's as Enoch says, it's right here, it's, it's the four portions of the year separated by the four seasonal days, and so when these groups do intercalations, they're going to end up being two or three days or one day, you know, away from the equinox. They're n sometimes they'll be starting their year the day following the equinox, but more often than not, they won't. And, you know, it's not as extreme 
as the lunar month Jewish calendar 13 month thing starting a month into the season of spring, but it is the same kind of thing, just on a smaller scale. You're going to end up with fractions of seasons. Your, your, your quote-unquote year is not matching the description that Enoch gave. And so like I was saying, I don't... There just seems to be this disconnect of of what time is, and I just wonder if it's like because of this love people have for the Dead Sea Scrolls, and I just want to share like I have I have a love for the older ancient writings too, like but my first love with regards to that, so to speak, was when I started reading the scriptures and uh, when I would read them and listen to them over and over and over again, I heard references to other books that didn't make it into the quote-unquote canonized Bible. And one of the first ones that really, really started jumping out at me was Enoch. And in the book of Jude, when Enoch was directly quoted, uh, you know, and uh, so I, I looked into, um, I, I started with Enoch when this, when I started to look outside the canonized Bible, and, uh, you know, I, there were other good books out there, like um, Baruch and Ezra, and, and different books that you hear mention of, or see strong ties to, to the scriptures, and that's all good, um, but I've also come across some, uh, some bad books, <laughs> And um, that I, I don't necessarily think were inspired, um, like possibly uh, Enoch 2 and Enoch 3, for example. But there are others. And so, you know, as far as the Dead Sea Scroll data, uh, calendar data goes, you know, people just need to... Um, Maybe they've already done this, but I have not done this, and I need to test it, and I need to prove it out, I need to understand... Who were the people who compiled that data together? Uh, you know, what, what? Because I want to make sure that it wasn't just some other group like the Pharisees uh, <laughs> out in the desert. Because, you know, even the Pharisees had the books of Moses. So it doesn't surprise me that this group out in Qum Qumran would have a lot of these other good books, like the Torah and Enoch and different writings like this. But it's possible that they also had some of their own writings in there and possibly were had their own doctrines and their own you know calendar or stuff and so this just all has to be tested and i mean i just want to mention as food for thought like you know i i i have some i'm starting to look into this dead sea scroll uh priestly order stuff and I, I have some books, and I've been given some literature, and I'm starting to look into, you know, this data that seems to be people are trying to mold the creator's times around, like the, and, and that's a very good way of describing what I think is happening. They're trying to find a way to mold the timepieces around the data when they can just simply look at the timepieces. And But anyway, um... Okay, what was I going to say? Right, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, these people, oh, the calendar data, um, oh, it's, it's leaving my mind. Oh, um, oh, right, okay, yeah, so I, I was looking into this, and, um, yeah, I, I have I have the books, the popular Dead Sea Scroll books, where where people go to, and I mean I I have the book that has a lot of this priestly order data in it, and so I I guess you know the book that I have actually has a lot of, if not all of, like the the non-biblical works that were found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, like it's that white book that has a Dead Sea Scroll on the front. I don't have the authors' names, but whatever. Uh, but I was surprised one day to discover the actual works of the, uh, the scriptures that made it into the canonized Bible weren't included in this book. I found that disappointing because, you know, it's important to have those too because those show you some truth. Like uh, the translations we have in English and King James and 
uh, what is it, the Masoretic, the Masoretic text is not always correct, so it's useful to know those as well. Um, but anyway, um, uh, I was looking at this book and just trying to give myself an introduction to this, and I just was looking through the table of contents at all these different writings that were found, and there was one that kind of caught my eye before I looked into anything else, and that was a scroll called the Community Scroll. And uh, I, w I just felt urged to go and read that one first, and uh, I read what the authors and the translators had to say about it. And they were describing... They said that this scroll, the community scroll, there were more of this scroll found than any other scroll, like single text. Like, uh, you know, there were, I think it said there were 13 copies, and that's more than any copy of Genesis or any copy of Exodus. Like, it was the most, uh, you know, they had the most uh, scrolls of, of that work, copies of that work, in, uh, from, from if I'm understanding that correctly. And they would use that scroll to kind of, uh, you know, indoctrinate or uh, <laughs> the, uh, what do you call, their initiates, people joining the, the community would kind of agree to abide by this scroll, I guess, and live by this scroll and be taught out of this scroll. It was, it, it doesn't, it doesn't sound all that different from kind of some churches nowadays where you join, it's almost like joining the, the club and you have to adhere to, uh, you know, I, I don't know if any of you have ever been through this, but I, I have, and I've seen it where, you know, before you can even join the church, you have to stand in front of the church, and they read through their doctrines, and it's like, do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? <laughs> and before you're even allowed to be baptized, they make you do that, which is really sad and messed up, because if I read the New Testament, the New Testament, the story of Philip and the Ethiopian, seems to tell me that uh, all the Ethiopian at one point was like, what doth hinder me from being baptized? And, uh, you know, the, there was nothing. He, if he believed, he said, you mayest. If you believe, I think Yeshua was the son of the Almighty, you may. But anyway, um, so this, this community scroll, I, I have, like I said, I, I can't keep talking about this. I could, I could talk all, I have a lot, so much I want to talk about, but I'm going to have to save it for the series. But I, I want to just mention this as food for thought because it kind of set off a, a preliminary warning bell in my head with regards to this. But, um, you know, there's this scroll that it seems this community abided by, and maybe, maybe someone can come along and show that the the Qumran community did not adhere to this scroll, but preliminarily it seems like uh, like they did. And the concerning thing is, uh, in this scroll, the authors say, uh, the authors describe this hatred that the community had for outsiders, and uh, I think it said... Uh, that this community called the uh, children of darkness, anyone who was not in their community, the children of darkness, or maybe their enemies were the children of darkness, or maybe it was someone who dis disagreed with their doctrines who were called the children of darkness. But anyway, whatever they were, um, it, it just mentioned this hatred, and then, so I read the first page of the translation of this community scroll, and lo and behold, there is a section where, you know, as they're, whatever, they're indoctrinating or initiating their initiates or whatever on the first page of this thing, they are saying, it sounds good, you know, but at one point it says, you know, you yada, 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 you shall love the laws of the Almighty, yada, yada, and you shall love your neighbor, and then it says, and you shall hate the children of darkness, and all of a sudden, it was like, ooh, that is, uh, that does not sound right, because I'm pretty sure, uh, Yeshua said we should love our, uh, enemies, and, like, I don't know, you know, like I said, maybe the children of darkness, someone can clarify if maybe that was a spiritual group, or, but if it was a people group, we're not supposed to hate anyone, and it's actually, it's a very, 
uh, striking similarity to a doctrine that I think Yeshua debunked when he was here, uh, when he gave his Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, and he said, you have heard it said that you shall love your enemy, and you shall, oh wait, wait, no, <laughs> that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Uh, but I say unto you, love your enemy. So that was a doctrine of the day. The doctrine was, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And that was the Pharisees. But it might have also been trickled into this Qumran community. And so what I'm trying to say is, in a nutshell, <laughs> things just need to be tested. Like, and I want to make sure, yes, okay, this community might have had access to a lot of good books like Moses and Enoch and different things like this, but they might have also mixed in their own stuff and their own traditions and their own twisted doctrine and hate doctrines and who knows what calendar data maybe. Maybe they were trying to replace Enoch or like I said, maybe they were trying to find something lost and I don't know, but it it has to be tested and um, so I'm, I'm going to try and do a short, like a, a series that has short videos that are kind of to the point addressing some of these key things and maybe clarity will come. I'm open-minded, but um I have not done this yet. I have not been a, a Berean to fully test this out yet, so I'm open. I'm going to put the questions out there, and I hope to people will chime in, and there will be good, loving discussion, and, you know, in the end, I hope we might find truth. And I just want to mention, while I'm talking about these different calendars, um, and, and this spring, it does seem like the this priestly order stuff has, is gaining a lot of popularity and like as I said I c all I can say is I think it's gonna simply boil down to if you're gonna f you're gonna follow Enoch's data or if you're gonna follow uh, the Dead Sea Scroll data because I'm pretty sure Enoch simply just seems to say the first day of the year is the day following the spring equinox but the priestly order data says it's a certain day of the week so I think that's, you're just going to have to study everything and uh, be honest with yourself. Seek this truth with a pure heart. Put all the ag other agendas aside. Put all convenience aside and just look at the scriptures and weigh the witnesses. And I, like I said, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, there's, um, we're seeking this truth. We, we are on the same team. You know, we're, and we, we, we just need to be loving with one another. We need to be open to willing to communicate and discuss these things, but we don't need to be beating each other over the head if someone doesn't see our view or, you know, pronounce judgment upon someone who's not seeing it our way. I mean, it's not for us to judge, uh, you know, who are we to judge another man's servant? Like, we just need to share the truth and love and discuss it. And just be honest with others and be honest with ourselves and, you know, hope that they do the same. I mean, that's all we can do. And just walk out what, what you understand and you've, you've proved, you know. And it's not to say that it'll be a permanent thing. You may, you know, the Creator may con continually kind of bring to your attention things that you need to rethink about or I need to rethink about. And, you know, uh, we may, you know, have to change our views in the future or our understandings in the future. But, um, you know, for now, <laughs> it does seem like we're, we're flying into uh, a big decision time here. And, but it, it can be a loving thing. We, we just need to be diligent. I just wish more people were diligent to look into this. Like right now, I, I kind of hear a lot of people asking other people so when are we going to start the year or like i've heard people say you know they are the quote unquote ambassador of their group and there are like 30 or 50 people following them and depending on them to bring forth the proper calendar and <laughs> i don't know like i guess paul did say some are the eyes some are the ears some are the hands but at some point people people may be gifted to understand certain things and bring knowledge to to other people of the group but e those other people of the group at some point do need to be diligent to kind of 
look into and examine and seek out truth like you know when i when, sometimes it can be overwhelming but we we can't be lazy and we just gotta we gotta be diligent to listen to the he'll he'll put on our hearts what he what he wants us to look into more i think he'll continually do that you know and if we're we're open to keep looking he'll he'll do that but if we close our hearts or minds or just become closed-minded or too busy with the cares of this world then it might stop but if we remain loving and open he'll in his perfect timing i mean if you're diligent you know you gotta you you, you can't ignore uh you can't let things get too busy and you can't let other people do it all for you at some point you've got to you've got to be diligent to look into these things for yourself and so i'll be putting out uh, this series that's kind of bringing these points out and maybe maybe it'll be the question the answer to the question somebody had maybe for this upcoming spring equinox or the start of this upcoming year or maybe it it'll it'll be the answer someone needs five years from now or or maybe i'll be completely wrong and <laughs> i'll need to change my understanding but uh I, yeah i'm just gonna put that out there so be on the lookout for that uh but anyway uh getting back to the winter solstice oh my i don't that was this is already this is already 30 minutes oh no um i'm gonna try and just fly through the rest of this but um i just i just don't i need to find a better way to do this because i just have so much i want to talk about and and as i know i know it's not the best way to do it to try and cram it all into one video and it you know you can't <laughs> you can't have a title of a video that addresses uh you know all the points you want to talk about uh so i mean people just see a long video and they're like oh I'm not gonna look into that, so I might, I might probably, you know, I'm gonna come out with shorter videos that kind of talk about a lot of these things and more things, just in shorter video format, so people can kind of get the quick answer uh, for what they're looking for, hopefully. Uh, but anyway, this past winter solstice, so um, as far as I can see from Enoch, like I said, we have, we have, and Genesis 1:4, there are, there are four parts four portions of the year all separated by the four intercalated days the four seasonal days the equinoxes and the solstices and they split the year into the four seasons summer spring summer fall winter and uh you know it just seems the first day of spring is the first day of the year and the first day of fall is the second half the first day of the second half of the year or you know as you as you read in the scriptures it's also referred to as the first day of the seventh month i think according to the solar month whatever the solar month actually is uh and I kind of discuss th that more in this video uh prep for winter solstice uh 2018 12 21 calendar time discussion video um <clears throat> i discuss more about this that seventh month but I'll, I'll be coming out with more videos i kind of talk about that briefly into the point too but um anyway there's uh the sun moves through these portals four seasons uh between these special seasonal days and um we're looking at the uh, winter solstice so it's this frowny face on the bottom and uh it's the the uh, so you'll see here's a picture of the data i took i took like a week lead leading up to the event and you can see when i connect the dots that is the correct uh, kind of approximately the you know the correct frowny face that we're looking for and here's just a flashback to uh, this past fall so you can see it was a straight line um but going back uh to the data from this recent winter solstice or not so recent uh the way this is laid out is um the i'll try to have a data point i'll always have a letter corresponding to uh, my mark so in this case you see it's a letter a for my mark the mark looks like a V, but that's just a V marking the edges of my uh, sundial. Um, and so this mark has a date. There will always be at least one mark corresponding to the letter with a date. And it looks like the, the A mark was on the 6th. So then in the lower right here, I have uh, another mark, B. I'm calling it B, and that was on the uh, 7th. 
and uh, the next mark is C, and it was on the 10th. So notice that it's not always necessarily A, B, C, uh, you know, back-to-back -back days A, B, C. Sometimes I'll, I'll jump a day, but it, it just tells you what the next letter was. And so just to give you an idea of the difference from day to day, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see two days of back-to-back -back data real close and I throw this line connecting my points, my A points, so you can see I'll zoom in on that upper left corner. And the mark for um, the day following, uh, so the B mark is still, it's lower than the A mark, so that means the shadow is still progressing towards its most extreme position. So this is just uh, more data more data. It's a picture of the sun on the horizon. Um, people have been talking about this, uh, and there are p perhaps many different ways to, uh, there are different ways to confirm the solstice and equinox events. Um, one method that I've heard a lot of people talking about lately, and I think we're going to see a lot of this spring, is the people trying to confirm with pictures on the horizon. So, for example, my picture is showing you where the sun was setting on the western horizon um, on the, or close to the day of the winter solstice. So then, for the um, summer solstice, it's going to move uh, more north. Uh, the sun will move more north, closer to us, and that's, things will get hotter and uh, it'll be approximately all the way to the right where the red text is and so that's kind of generally the thing that you'll see and then on the equinox events it'll set somewhere right in the middle and so i'm not sure uh how people are planning to prove if they're going to take pictures of the sun on the horizon i don't know how they're going to prove that that is the equinox um unless Unless they've collected, maybe unless they've collected data uh, for the solstice events, and so they know where the two extreme positions are, and they've just measured, and they know where the middle's going to be, and so they'll know when the equinox is, when that sun hits that middle mark on the horizon, or maybe they have a, a compass bearing that they're using to measure where that should be. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to mention uh, what I would need to do if I were doing this. I think I'd need to find the middle point between the two solstice events in order to do that. Um, but uh just wanted to let you know that. Another method I hear, I think a lot of people are going to try and do this year, is that round wheel um, thing that Jerry Morris used um, where he sights a, his wheel and on the North Star and then he's got crosshairs and he's looking at the shadows. Um, the only thing I would say about that is the North Star does seem to move, um, and there's a lot of, like people who do these wheels with wood. The wood w warps and expands and contracts, and it just. But like I said, the North Star moves. I'm gonna have a. Uh, it appears like if you ever look at a, a star wheel online, be careful. Uh, you got to be careful with those because it's pretty easy to Photoshop and throw a star right in the middle. But if you're looking at a star wheel uh, trail that someone did correctly, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, if you look, you will actually you can prove to yourself that the North Star does actually move. Not that much, but it does. Uh, because, you know, there isn't a point right in the middle of the star trail. Like, you'll see even the North Star doing a little circle. Uh, and I'm going to I'm gonna try and... I've, I have seen this for sure in Stellarium. So I'll have to do a little video to kind of show people um, if that is actually reality. But especially when you're only looking at a very short sundial, like Jerry Morris's wheel sundial was only, you know, six inches off of the where the shadow was being cast. So differences from day to day are very, very fine. Uh, even for what I've been doing, it's very, very fine. Like I, I still say the best thing you can do is to find a skyscraper <laughs> or the Washington Monument and, you know, if you can take your sundial data off of something like that, it's going to be very, very clear. Like, we're not going to be little microbes of an inch from data point to data point. You're going to actually be feet, and it's going to be very clear uh, if the sun was heading this way or that way. Uh, but anyway, just 
wanted, I'm glad people are going to be trying different things, but I just wanted to put that out there as food for thought, maybe uh, just to make sure we're, we're all, you know, thinking about this from all angles uh, in case we, we do end up getting different results. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, what's next? More data. So I just, yeah, I've got a picture here showing, uh, I think, my G mark. Uh, it was, you can see the shadow there between two faint lines, and I drew for G, and I didn't even bother to put a point on that one because it was just, the sun was so faint. It was, when, the, when you don't have 100% sunlight on top of having a short sundial, it, it does become really challenging to see if the shadow is progressing one way or another because in the dull sunlight, it just looks so faint. You can't quite tell where the edges are and where the point is. So you end up like taking a picture like this and trying to do it after the fact by f following the shadow lines to a point. And uh, I just, I don't like that at all. That doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy inside like I've proved anything. So, um, again, I'd just like to say, you know, the taller your sundial, the better. Because uh, even, even a really tall sundial, um, if you have a really tall sundial, you can potentially still make it work even if you're dealing with overcast skies because it's so much taller <laughs> and I'll, I might do a, a video trying to explain that geometry a little more but um, more data more data so this was the last data point I took um, on the 20th of December and I think the solstice was projected to happen on the 21st by Google and I think maybe Jerry or other people were saying his data was projecting it should happen earlier. Um, but if you notice, I have a note here that says 80%. So this was the day I was only able to get one data point. There was only one H data point for the 20th. And it was with overcast skies. I only had a moment where the sun poked through and I got this data point. And so it was... It was not 100% sunlight, and so I do not feel warm and fuzzy about the accuracy of that. Um, like, I draw a line here, and from this line, it does appear like the H might be above the line, so it might have started to return already, but because it was overcast, I... Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, it is, I just wanted to share this with the disclaimer, like, and we'll see another data point later where, um, it appears, it really does appear like that is just kind of a bad mark because of the, uh, the lack of sunlight that day, but, um, more data, more data. Okay, so this is the one. So this is N. It was on the 26th, so like a week later. And I've got three data points at least. And so if you look here, I've drawn a line between my G points. So, um, and then if you look at the mark for the N, it is like right above that G line. And the G line, uh, I believe the G line was on the 19th. It was the, the day right before the, um, the, the one mark I got on the 20th. So look how close that mark is to the line. Like, it shouldn't be... <laughs> It shouldn't be that close if the equinox or the solstice event truly happened uh, like a week before. Like, in, if it's that close, then the sun, like, it, it should have all been, or already been pro progressing for like two to three days at least to be that close to that line on, uh, on, from the G points that were made on the on the 19th, so, I don't know, 
here here's here's an example of uh, on the eighth day of January. I just collected this point so people could kind of see a clear cut example of how the shadow is definitely returning at this point. Like I have a line drew, drawn through my G points again, and you can see how it is obviously returning um, like a week or two later at this point. So um, uh, just a close ups of all my data here. So again, the, I guess the, the summary is this fall or the this past winter uh, equinox, I just I don't feel my data was good enough to confirm anything for that event. Um, so uh, I guess we're just uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what happens uh, for this, this spring equinox. I do feel reasonably good about what happened last fall. Um, like oh dear, there's the dog barking. Um, oh, she's barking at something in the woods. Okay, anyway, um, the last fall. So, um, I'm, I'm interested, I just want to say what I found that worked for me, um, last fall. If you're looking at this picture, um, you know, it, it'd be a little more extreme, I mean, it'd be a lot more extreme depending on how tall your sundial is, but... Uh, if uh, you could be like, if you got a really short sundial, it might only be two to three inches difference between these three lines. If you're got a really tall sundial, it might be uh, feet or yards. But uh, anyway, if you can imagine um, these three lines as representing the three days straddling an equinox event, um, in theory, or well, what I noticed last fall in actual experimentation is. Notice how the three lines are closest together right in the middle of the page. So if you're collecting your data in near solar noon or the middle of the day, that's when the data points are going to be closest together for those three lines. And it's going to be really a challenge to see uh, if, you know, if the marks are progressing one way or the other right in the middle of the page because that's where they're going to be closest together. But as you go out to the sides of the page, those arcs start to sweep away from the middle straight line dramatically. And those marks out on the sides are taken in the early morning or the evening. So what I found last fall is if I collected my data points as early and as late as I could, then I would get this exaggerated arc shape and it would be clearly it would be clearly far away like I could clearly see the curve um, and then the straight line. Uh, for example, this is a picture of the data that was, I, got, I think, the day prior to the f what I thought the fall equinox happened. And you can see, if you look at those, how the marks are all, you know, on one side of the line. And it's pretty easy to see that because I was able to collect points in the early morning and the late evening. But, uh, you know, this this one on the uh, what I thought was the um, fall equinox event, it was pretty much dead on straight line. Nothing above or below. So it's just uh, that would be my tip. Uh, use a really tall sundial. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, Washington Monument. Oh man, if anyone lives near that thing, or if you're in a city with tall buildings, uh, get in touch with me. My email will be in the description below this video, and I'll try and coach you or tell you what you need to know to to be able to record some data using that taller sundial. But um, I think that's so. That's it for now. Uh, this winter solstice, uh, I guess my data was kind of inconclusive because my goal, I guess, was to try and confirm if the solstice event happened according to Google's uh, projected date, which was the 21st. Um, and I checked in Stellarium, and, and that does appear to be what Stellarium was saying was going to happen, too. I, have, uh, I came out with a couple videos where I'm talking about where time begins, and I mentioned... Uh, one of them five minutes long, so you can get the quick summary of of what that video was about. But in a nutshell, I was trying to pin down the moment and location 
uh, the geographic location where these moments, these solstice and equinox events occurred. And um, it does appear like the past fall equinox happened, uh, well, the winter solstice anyway, happened on the same day that Google said it was going to happen. I'm not sure if there might be something funny happening with the time of day, though. I'll have to double check that. But, um, so, that's the day I was trying to see if I could get confirmation for, but I only had sunlight up to the 20th, not the 21st, and I had really bad sunlight on the 20th, so I just really didn't get a chance to confirm if Google and Stellarium was correct. Um, but if you rewatch the video and look at that G point, and maybe the, the data point before the G, you might be able to figure out if the trend of Jerry Morris's data was um, is still kind of lining up with this, um, because I think Jerry's projected solstice event should have started to return like two or three days before Google for sure. So I haven't taken a close look at that, but if anyone wants to do that, um, what you would need to do is uh, you'd need to look at my my data kind of from the G points and prior and see if they're still progressing by the time they get to G. I wouldn't go far, like I only got one more point past G and that was H on the 20th. But um, I think if you're able to show that the data was still progressing, oh, and I think there is a picture that shows that. Um, it was... I'll include it here. It was the picture. Yeah, I know there's a picture that I, re I realized did that. I did look at that briefly, and I think it was still progressing. Um, yeah. I don't know, I can't remember, but if someone wants to take the time to look at that data, I think I think it was possible to tell that at least that the solstice event had not yet occurred by the 19th. So if that is worth anything to anybody, I think at least that much is clear from this data that the solstice event did not happen prior to the 19th. Uh, but anyway, I have a few more points here I just want to mention. Uh, pick a spot. Google and Stellarium. Okay, I want to mention, um, I think I mentioned that people are also looking at the witness of the moon and the portal alignment. It's looking like the, the moon might actually line up in the same portal as the sun on the days of the equinox. I checked this out in Stellarium, and that does seem to be the case. And there are other truth seekers who have been talking about this happening and claiming they've seen it for the past couple of years. And so that could be an interesting good second witness to confirm the equinox event. Um, I think also that the stars have the ability to confirm the the equinox event or these seasonal days because Enoch I, I know Enoch has parts where he says that and we might have actually read one of them earlier or it's it's right near that section that we read that's talking about how there are stars that lead the seasonal days so I, I think truly the sun, moon, and stars can confirm. Uh, <laughs> and I actually just, one of my viewers shared a comment uh, with me, uh, and I have to thank them for that. I've just been so busy, I haven't been able to, to look into it too much or kind of share what I noticed, but the translation they shared with me is one that I haven't seen yet, and it looks like a more recent one where they actually told you where some of the source texts could be found for which, which were used. Uh, to make the translation of Enoch, and uh, they're sitting in places like, uh, you know, the old ancient uh, works, uh, books of, of uh, different libraries like Berkeley and uh, stuff like that. But anyway, this translation, because um, I know there's, there's this debate about <laughs> which timepieces 
bring in the years, you know, with perfect justice. And, you know, some trans- the first translation I ever came across said, the sun and the stars bring in the years with perfect justice. And then as I started looking to all the different translations, I realized um, the majority of the translations actually seem to say, the moon and the stars bring in the years with perfect justice. And so it was just, it's like really kind of a point of frustration, and I see kind of some big doctrines being made off of this this text and I just wanted to mention this translation and I'll come out with a video talking about this specifically but this last translation that one of my viewers shared a comment with me um, it actually referenced I looked at this part because I was curious or I don't know if it was just a coincidence but I looked at it and it didn't say uh, <laughs> You know, because I've looked at all the other translations, and they will either say sun and moon or sun and stars. And it was kind of, like I said, it was almost a 50-50 split, but I think I found one or two more translations that tipped the balance towards uh, sun and moon as being the, the majority of one. But it's like, why? How, how can the translators be making this mistake? Like, surely it's not just one or the other. Like... Like, how are they making this mistake? Like, what does the original language say? Does it say, is the word for moon there? Like, okay, the the word for... And some of the translations actually only said the moon. That's right. Yeah, some of the translations only said moon. Not even the sun. And so it was really frustrating. It's just like, what is going on with the translation? Like, uh, surely, surely we can figure out what, what the word was there. Like, was it moon? Was the original word in the original language moon? Was it sun? Was it stars? Like, why is there this, this discrepancy? Like, were the translators just trying to interpret that to match their understanding of time or calendars at the time they translated it? Anyway, the, this last translation I came across gave a new interesting twist to this uh, this issue. And this translation did not say sun and stars. It did not say moon. It did not say sun and moon. But if memory serves me right, it actually said the luminaries. All of them. Not just some or one of them, but all all of them bring the years in with perfect justice. And so all of a sudden that set off like bells of possibility in my head because it was all of a sudden it was like, oh, that potentially makes a lot of sense. Like, because obviously the sun brings in the years and from what I'm seeing and from what people are claiming, it seems the moon also will confirm the equinox, but surely it, it also seems like the stars must do this. Like, I know there are verses that talk about the stars doing this. And so, potentially, and like I said, I think there are some big doctrines going left and right over this because of the way it was translation and translated, and it's big and it's pivotal to their understanding and their intercalation, and uh, it might just be that the translations are are kind of all wrong uh, except for maybe that one because that one really makes a lot of sense when you just step back and you look at it and you think about it like and you read in other places of Enoch and it's like yes yes there are other places in Enoch where he says the sun does it and the moon lines up with the sun and the stars also line up on these days and so I, th- I think it's very possible and I just want to mention that um, so, let's see, one more thing I want to mention. Two more things, quick things. Uh, the, the, I just want, as food for thought, I'm still thinking if these solstice and equinox events are a day-long event, or if they are a moment event. And modern science seems to tell us it's a moment. Stellarium, uh, when I, I did the re- my recent two videos, seemed to prove that Stellarium is programmed for it to be a moment. These are just programs, and that's just, and the other one is just popular modern day science. But I have been wondering if it's possible that these events are day long events. And um, I'm going to come out with a video kind of showing my thoughts on that, but real quickly, preliminarily. Um, 
the if you think about it when you see uh, the pictures I show for the sundial patterns where you got the smiley face and the frowny face and the straight line down the middle um, theoretically it seems if the solstice events and the equinox events are only a moment then it seems first of all unless there's something going on with the firmament or the atmosphere or something that just allows the sun to kind of move continue to move north and south but still create a straight line preliminarily i'm thinking you cannot get a straight line you're gonna get some amount of curve you're gonna have to get some amount of curve if it, if these equinox events are truly a um, a single moment event uh, because if modern science is correct you know the sun is going to just continually progress north or south over the course of the year but I th for some reason I just feel like in Enoch it, these days are supposed to be days seasonal days and not moments um, and so I was just thinking <laughs> For the equinox events, it just feel it just seems like you could not get the straight line. You would always get some kind of curve or half a half a curve or something. Like someone might see, they they would never see a straight line. It seems, um, if according to modern science and according to Stellarium, because the sun would always be progressing uh, north or south. Like it wouldn't pause in that gate or the edge of the portal to make an extra circuit uh, on that same circuit. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's uh, all the same thing goes for the solstice events. The smiley face and the frowny face patterns, excuse me, if you think about it, um, you're collecting data one day and then you collect data the next day. It just seems preliminarily to me that if if the solstice event was um, a moment and not a day event, then if you were collecting several data points the day prior to the uh, solstice event, and then on the day of the solstice event, it seems to me if the solstice event was only a moment of time event, then your data points would have to, you wouldn't see one line of data and then the next day you'd see another line of data and all the data points uh, be on one side of the line from the previous day. It seems to me there would be an intersection because according to modern science and according to Solarium, the sun is always progressing north or south. And so it just seems like there would need to be an overlap, uh, which is not what I have seen. Like, I think, uh, I'm, uh, I think, I'm thinking it might be a day, but those are just uh, preliminary food for thought. I'm going to come out with a bunch of short videos looking into the priestly order and then putting out a bunch of other, um, uh, you know, all these other points. And I've been talking about them and try and do short videos because people, you know, they don't have time to sit down and watch an hour long video. <laughs> Some people do, and you're kind of getting all the preliminary thoughts in that, but, uh, you know, it's more appealing when people look for this, this stuff that it's, it's shortened to the point. And so I'm going to, I'm going to be making a lot of short videos that kind of try and bring out a lot of these points, just point by point by point, uh, and quick answers for people looking with, for specific questions. Uh, uh, but anyway, I just wanted to share that uh, preliminarily with, with people watching this video. So um, aside from that, the last thing I'll say is um, there are other people making observations and trying to make observations. I know Leland uh, in Jerusalem tried to observe the winter solstice uh, this past um, 2018 in Jerusalem and I think you know he was admitting he was a little inexperienced with that and uh, he, you know, his shadow data wasn't moving very much either, and he was dealing with overcast skies, and so. But it was it was interesting. Uh, I you know, go to his channel and check it out. Um, or I have created Facebook pages. I will have the uh, groups 
the group names in the description below this video, different focus groups for people who are trying to look for information on uh, tracking the sun or the moon or the stars. Um, I just created these different groups where I am collecting all, all the observations I see people trying to make. So, for example, Leland's video will be there, Jerry Morris's videos will be there, Juan Carlos's videos will be there. Like, uh, you know, and if people will get in touch with me and let me know, you know, if they have videos or if they want to send me pictures of data that they collected, um, I would like to make people aware of that, and I'll be putting that stuff on, on that Facebook page, too. Uh, but I'm just trying to collect all that information for people who want to be able to go to one place and kind of see all the witnesses for that specific topic but uh all right i think that's been enough rambling i think that's all i had to say uh i guess that's it for now shalom and may yah bless as you continually seek out his truths and love with a pure heart